Hello, hello. This is part two of four video lessons about the judicial branch. I am Miss Jennifer Blank, and I will be your guide on this journey. So as we talked about in the last video lesson, I always like to start with a little review. These are our branches of government. And of course, I have listed the unofficial fourth branch of government, the bureaucracy. But the three official branches are the legislative, executive, and judicial. And here you see a breakdown of what each branch does. Okay, so I cannot possibly overemphasize this enough. You must have this memorized. Legislative branch makes law. Ex executive branch executes law. The judicial branch judges law. The bureaucracy creates regulations that allow for the enforcement of said law. But they do this based on the instructions of the legislative and executive branches. And here you see a breakdown, a little review of checks and balances and separation of powers. It is essential that not only do we know the definitions of those two items, checks and balances, separation of powers, but that we also understand how they work. So here in this flow chart, you see a breakdown. This first layer of the chart uh, looks at separation of powers, and the rest of it looks at checks and balances. And here we have a breakdown of divided government. As I've said previously, the legislative and executive branches are inherently political. So you have divided government when you have one party in control of the legislative and the other in control of the executive. However, the judicial branch is supposed to be apolitical or politically neutral. They are supposed to be objective and ruled based on the Constitution, not based on a particular political party. That is the goal. And here, now, we, have, we enter part two of the judicial branch. We are looking at sources of American law and types of, of courts. Okay, so this is important because a lot of people have questions about how does a case actually get to the Supreme Court, right? What, what, how, how do they decide what is constitutional and what isn't? What, what is it that they use to do that? So this lesson is going to talk a little bit about that. So <clears throat> where are our sources of American law? Well, obviously, we're looking at our own constitution, right? The U.S. Constitution is the supreme law of the American land. Uh, we are also looking at statutes, which law passed by state legislatures and U.S. Congress, and some administrative regulations. We look at case law. That's another word for precedent, um, the idea of looking at how judges have ruled in the past to inform how judges should rule now, this concept of precedent. We'll talk more about that in class. But there are uh, basic judicial requirements. Uh, and now the Constitution says that federal courts have jurisdiction. Jurisdiction means authority. Uh, federal courts have authority to rule on cases that meet one, at least one of the two bullets listed below. It involves a federal question or it involves diversity of citizenship. In that instance, regardless of where the case starts, whether it starts in a local court or a state court, those uh, central questions need to be determined by federal courts, and federal courts can call for that case and, and determine the ruling on it. You also need something that's called standing to sue. You need to effectively have a right to sue the other party. Um, and there are requirements for this that we will discuss in greater detail in class next week. Now, what are the types of federal courts? So we have the district courts, we have the Court of Appeals, we have the U.S. Supreme Court, and then you have specialized federal courts. We have the FISC, that's the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court. We have alien removal courts. We have the Court of International Trade, and we have the Tax Court, right? So there are specialized federal courts that deal with only particular things, and that's, that's what those items are. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But here, I wanted to show you a visual breakdown of how the court system interacts. So, and you see some other additional kinds of courts here as well. So, bankruptcy courts, tax courts, district courts, territorial courts, federal regulatory agencies, all of these uh, start here, and then they would go to the Court of Appeals. Uh, if anybody uh, doesn't like the ruling, they can do what's called an appeal, and they can ask for a higher court to evaluate the ruling and see if it, they might overturn it or if they agree with it. Court of Appeals, from there, the only you know, stop left is the Supreme Court. With the Court of International Cra Trade, Federal Claims, and Veterans Appeals, you have the Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit, uh, and then from there, you would go to the U.S. Supreme Court. Now, do you, as an AP student, need to memorize all of these? No. No, you do not, and that's exciting. But you should understand that there are layers of court systems, right? Not everything just goes to the Supreme Court. There's a structure for how it gets there. Now, to give you, this would be a good idea to, to at least commit to memory of some of it. Um, so you, this is different methods of how to get uh, to the, the Supreme Court. 
and also looking at federal and state systems. So most cases start out as state cases, right? You have trial courts, major and minor, uh, if you commit a murder, if you commit you know, assault and battery, things like this, they'll go through a trial system. Then you have intermediate courts of appeals, and then you have the state Supreme Court. Once you've hit the state Supreme Court, then depending on the kind of case, you can go, you can appeal directly to the Supreme Court, or you have to come here, go through the district courts, into the Court of Appeals, and then if the Supreme Court agrees to take your case, it would get it would get to there that way. But the Supreme Court doesn't have to take your case. Matter of fact, they don't take 99% of the cases they are asked to take, that people ask for uh, for them to hear on. Uh, they only hear about 1% of cases, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so here's a geographic boundary breakdown of how the, the federal district court and the, the, the appeals courts work. So everybody's divided into districts um, so for the purposes of organization. So just to give you a visual of what that looks like. Uh, for example, uh, New York State, we are in District 2. Okay. Now, how do cases work, right? Well, you got to get some basic vocabulary because when you're reading Supreme Court decisions, which we are going to be reading in our class, we're going to be reading excerpts from these, uh, you need to, you're going to see words like plaintiff, defendant, litigant. So we need to know what these are. So a plaintiff is the person that's initiating the lawsuit. The defendant is the person defending themselves against the lawsuit. The litigant, uh, what this means is to engage in a legal proceeding or seek relief in a court of law to carry on a lawsuit. So if you are par a party to a case, you are a litigant. Amicus curiae, this, this will be on the AP exam. Memorize this. This is a friend, of, it's, it's literally in Latin, it's a friend of the court. Basically, a third party who has an interest in the case files a brief, a, a, a breakdown of information and legal arguments about the case on behalf of one side or the other. They aren't directly involved in the case, but if the case goes one way or the other, it will infect them. So amicus curiae briefs are very, very common in Supreme Court cases. Uh, procedural rules, uh, you have different time, type, types of contempt. You have civil contempt, criminal contempt. Uh, civil contempt is failure to comply with the court's order. So if order in the court, order in the court, and you don't have order in the court, the judge can say, I, I charge you with contempt. And they can make you charge a fine or even serve, uh, serve some, uh, some time in jail. A criminal contempt is when you're actually obstructing justice. That's a much more serious charge. So civil contempt is when you're just, you know, not playing nice in the courtroom and engaging in bad behavior. Criminal contempt is you're actually obstructing justice. That's, that, that, that's a whole other layer of criminality uh, with much worse repercussions. So that, folks, is the end of part two. I hope you learned what you needed to, and I will see you in the next video.